Originally, sundials performed a practical purpose were found at places like churches. Later, there were more objects of prestige were found in country estates. Nowadays, they're mostly found as ornaments in gardens. This is a nice Victorian example with four faces or dials and with four gnomons to cast a shadow. On top are little statuettes of Atlas with the world on their backs. This is a replica of the oldest type of sundial found in Britain, known as tide dials. This divides the day into four sections using five lines, each of which are three hours long, so it neatly covers 12 hours the working day. This odd-looking structure is actually a sundial. It's got a facet head sundial. It's a good example of one that has moved around a bit. It was first of all at Kirk Hall House. It was then moved down to the seafront in Ardrossan and now stands outside Ardrossan Town Hall. Sundials were expensive to make, but they were small enough to be transportable so if people moved house, the family could shift the sundial itself. This one has got several dials and also inscriptions. Sometimes it was part of the stonework that was the gnomon, that is the part that actually cast a shadow. Other times it was a piece of metal, usually brass, that was inserted into the stone. More often than not, these have been snapped off. The mathematical skill to create the lines to accurately tell the time on, on sundials was known as dialing. This was quite commonly taught. Robert Burns was taught this skill when he was at Kirk Coswold School. This is an armillary sundial. This example is found in the Queen Elizabeth II Gardens at Dumfries House, which is a modern example. Here, the arrow going through the centre casts the shadow to tell the time. The actual hours of the day are inscribed on one of the, of the brass bands. This rather sad example of a horizontal sundial is outside the Cathedral of the Isles on Cumbri. Sadly, the actual brass dial itself has been removed and only the stonework remains. Sometimes the only evidence that a sundial existed is from Ordnance Saver maps. At Ashgrove House here in the walled garden, there was one marked at the centre. It's now gone. Possibly it was a facet head one, which originally had come from Monk Castle that's nearby. This is a typical lectern style sundial. It dates from the 17th or 18th century and is found at Dumfries House. Notice it doesn't use Roman numerals. At each of the four sides are also separate dials. Sometimes sundials have numerous faces or dials. These really serve no purpose other than ornamentation, particularly at a time when Calvinism was strong which didn't approve of unnecessary ornamentation unless it had a practical purpose. Sundials weren't uncommon in cemeteries, partly because of the symbolism of time passing. This example at Fairfield Cemetery near Moncton has had the dial removed. This example is found on the Glen Cairn Isle at Camor's Glen Cairn Church. It was given by the minister the Reverend William Coates in 1753. It probably once stood on a pillar in front of the church and was later moved to where it is now. This example might have had two other dials at one time. Some of these were actually used moonlight, so they were known as moon dials. The gnomon is very clear here and it's survived because it's out of reach. The angle of the gnomon had to be altered depending on the latitude to retain the accuracy of the time. One of the skills of a sundial maker was to choose appropriate stone so that this inscription itself would survive the weather. This traditional horizontal sundial in Beeth was given to commemorate the donation of an area of land used for a war memorial. Sometimes sundials had, had appropriate inscriptions. This one's to be found at Beath Old Kirk. This obelisk-style sundial is to be found in West Kilbride. 
It was produced by Professor Robert Simpson, um, a professor of mathematics in Glasgow, in 1717. It's unique to Scotland, this star is not found anywhere else in the world. He also had his parents' initials carved on it, the various symbols such as hearts. This design wasn't very stable. There are records of horses and cattle having knocked them over when they were re-erected the rotten fort shortened. This is another example of a sundown in a cemetery. This occasion is rather finely produced, typical of the wealth of the factory owners who once lived in the Kuberni area. This rather old and worn example is on the stables at Dumfries House. Rather nicely it has an engraving of the sun at the base of the gnomon. Probably it was not placed in Roman numerals for the benefit of the farm workers. This example in the Valeview Garden at Bar Mill is purely there for ornamentation, not enough sunlight here to throw a shadow. This is a typical example of a traditional sundial that might be found in a Victorian garden. This is at Pearston, near Irvine. There was a much older house here which you might be expected to have a typical old-style sundial such as a facet head, but none remains or none survives. Sundials can be easily overlooked, particularly if there are other structures nearby. This one's at the old Brig and Air. Hundreds of people walk past this every day, but very few notice. Sadly, it's had the gnomon broken off. This facet head dial is typical of that you'd find amongst country houses. This is at Ladeland, not far from Kilburnie. Sometimes this type would have up to five dials. Leyland also has a 17th century example of a lectern style. There's an engraving to William Cochrane and his wife Catherine Hamilton. This 1723 example may originally have been a facet head style. It clearly had been reworked at some point. It sort of come originally from Coburnie Place, then went to Redhue House and eventually ended up in Gateside. Killeen is a spectacular example of a lectern style. Got numerous faces or dials. This one has been restored, so the gnomons have been replaced. It's a good example of the prestige value. The cost of, of having the mathematics calculated to produce the various dials and also the skilled workmen who'd have to be paid to produce it, usually a master mason. Ockham Groove is a nice example of a 1993 sundial placed there as part of the garden restorations. This magnificent example carved on slate is thought to originally come from Moore Park House. Sometimes the separate dials gave the times for separate cities and different parts of the world. I presume there was a good reason for placing this dial at such a strange angle on the wall of the church of St. Columba in Stewarton. Although it's totally worn, the rather unusual shaped gnomon still casts a shadow. <laughs>